I got a couple of requests about that, but were you guys amazed by how much you've learned? Yeah. 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 Except, uh, except I felt like a novice in the soil. I'm like, oh, this again. Yeah. I, I, more. I feel like a novice. Yeah. So what were some of, like, let's hear three things that we either found interesting or like, oh, my God, I know that. Does anyone have one? Yeah. what's so cool about our acid loving plants is what makes it an acid loving plant is that it can ex um, it can access those nutrients at a more acidic pH right that's why for so many of our plants we have to raise the pH for things like tomatoes and other non-native plants because they've evolved to be in a different soil and they expect to see nutrients at a different pH right that's just all it is so I, I always love that I think that's so cool uh, all right another fact or another fun thing uh, Yeah, yeah, right? Like that is our diagnostic steps. Is this just normal, right? Like, um, so, and a lot of times things that will do, people will present as problems um, have no intervention, right? Like you think about the sap sucker damage that we saw, uh, the azalea caterpillars, you could knock them out, but if they get out of hand and they eat all the leaves one year, if the plant's healthy, it'll come back just fine the next year. Uh, humans think on a much tighter time scale than plants do, right? Like we want a solution now. A lot of times they're like, I'm gonna try again next year. So uh, give them a year often. One more thing. here on your first day. I'm yeah. thrilled to be back on your last day. And I've run into many of you throughout this four months or however long it's been. You've been doing all this stuff. It's a, it's a long haul. It's, it's tremendous. I'm just, it's so exciting that you are where you are. And I'm thrilled for you. And I appreciate that you read the email that I sent from the system last week and have signed up to cover some public events. And I'm not here to talk about public events today. I am here as I am the team leader for the technology team. I need to preface that by saying I am not an IT or a technical kind of person, but I was on the team who 
decided what it was we wanted in a website, and that's, that's the state team. So I know the internet pretty well. Um, so if you got a question about the internet, I'm your go-to person. But if you got a problem with some other IT thing, you need to go to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, uh, Ashley has her computer, and I almost brought mine because I'm a mouse person. So I use the mouse. So she ran, she got a new mouse. The thing works backwards. I go down, it goes up. I go up, it goes down. <laughs> I said, okay, I can handle this. So. <laughs> well, I would, but then I got no place to put my hand. <laughs> so, where did that come from? Don't mess with me. You see, I'm going back here. That's, that's Ashley's calendar. Here we go. I found my way back. Okay, so I am the chair of this very small committee. It is a committee of four people. It's myself and Kat Causey, who I'm sure you've ran into at some point in the last four months. And we are the volunteers. And then there are two staff people, and that is Pam, who you all know, is the program coordinator, and Ashley. So if you have a problem about the internet, you need to come to me, and then Kat, and then Pam, and then Ashley, in that order. Don't hit Ashley with internet questions. She's got too many other things to do. And we are really happy to do that. She's always trying to save me some work, but that's really okay, I like what I do, so I'm really good with that. The other thing is I am looking to train someone. So if any of you here really think you might want to have my job in another 10 years when I retire. <laughs> At least 10. Yeah, just. Just let me know at some point. But just talking about the technology team, what is it that we do? Well, there's a whole lot that we do, and I have a cheat sheet over there, but I'm mostly not gonna use that. Oh, I keep going forward and I gotta go backward. All right. Gosh, well, so what we do is we manage this site for Durham County. So we keep track of hours, we keep track of the calendar, we enter the calendar for the office duty. I, I personally enter public events, so any public event is in there, and if the times are wrong, Eric, it was me who did that. <laughs> so, but it's okay, sometimes I get in a hurry. Um, the other thing we do is we try to be supportive to and educate anyone who has a question about the internet. So I'm really open for that. If there's something that you don't understand, if there's something you can't figure out how to do, even if it's signing up for an event, anything, you just need to contact us and we're, we'll be really happy to help you. And on this is my, my page, this is the state technology, my county technology page. And there's some interesting things right here. These three top tabs are the tech tips that I do every month for the newsletter. So if you want to go back and look at some of them, it is just an amazing amount of information about things that you do every day in your, in your work um, on the computer. On every page, on every county page, every committee page, there is at the bottom, I'm going to get this so it doesn't go the wrong way, there's a committee description. So any program that you are, program committee, we use those terms interchangeably. The internet calls them programs, people call them committees, so. But on every single one of those pages, or those committees, there is a um, committee um, description. So this actually goes to, I'm not gonna read this to you, y'all can read it, so you can go and do that. I'd rather just talk about what's fun. So <laughs> that is there. And the other thing that you'll find on the back button, on the page, on every one of these pages, and I can do it right here with public events, is if you scroll down on the main program page, you'll find on all of those program pages, you can click there for the annual report. What the annual report is at the end of each year, each one of these committees does a summary of what they've done, what they've accomplished in the prior year, and what their goals and plans are for the future. 
So if there is any committee that you're interested in maybe becoming a part of, look at these two things first. You look at a good description and you look at what they've done in the past. So. agent Andrea Mike Hannah Jones <laughs> I'm the master gardener coordinator sorry um, I help Adrian uh, Moni, Moni with uh, the 4-H uh, kids programs we also have a program that 4-H is ages 5 through 18 and we also have somebody who does the preschool kids which is lots of fun, and that's mostly for well for master gardeners. Um, so um, Melissa Young has been doing it a lot, and she has this thing, <laughs> and I just shake my head sometimes when she does it. She's like, "Oh, this school, this after school program needs needs a speaker, needs a class, and um, it's really short notice, but." Oh, can we just do it so so that they'll learn, get the information? So she does it. <laughs> and we help her. We help her do it. If you are ever inclined to teach that age, we usually do elementary age right now. We do not are not in the middle school. Well, there is a middle school club, but um, Adrian runs that. And um, and we don't do high school. We just do the fun fun elementary kids. <laughs> the fun, fun ones that go, oh yeah, I want to learn. <laughs> and um, so if you're interested in helping out, you can help out first before you start teaching. You can also think about things. She has about 10 or 12 programs that are, are, are standard. One of them, this, we have, I think, worn out birds. <laughs> but in the fall, she's, you know, we're thinking about leaves and pumpkins and things like that, bats, you know, that are more of a fall sort of thing. And, but if you ever want to do a program on apples or anything uh, plant related or, or animal related, then that's a, this is a really good place for you and you can develop that, but I would suggest you be a helper first to see how it goes. And um, do you have any questions? <laughs> yes. You want to do teenagers? I love Well, then you need to talk to, you need to, talk to Adrian. Yeah, and see. The other thing is, I try to get my teenagers into voyage that hasn't, and there hasn't been a program here. We've been yeah. trying to figure out, like, why can't? Yes. And then we have friends in other places that forage is huge, and it's mostly yeah. teenagers and nothing for younger ones. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Okay, so. 
so one of the reasons is, is this is an, an urban setting. Okay, so some of the rural settings have a lot more animals and things like that for, for kids um, that are in 4-H and, and on farms and things like that. Um, we haven't really got into that. I, Adrian does a, a plant one out at Briggs. They, it's, and it's like a homeschool setting. They, they're teenagers. I like little ones. <laughs> but contact Adrian, and she would be glad to help you have help and, and set things up. And you can suggest to where we also have summer fun which is summer classes during the summer. And um, so, for, and that's 4-H. And they have a babysitting class, they have a sewing class, they have a farm to fork class, they have a coding class. All of those are mostly teenagers. And then we have polar buds, which are five to eight. That's where I shine. <laughs> we have a um, master gardener who's a who has decided that she wanted to chair it, so she's chairing it. Her name's Raza, she was actually supposed to be here. <laughs> and uh, so we have about 12 or 14 kids for a half day for a week. And next year we're planning on putting on the same camp twice. So we will need extra people to help with that because everybody can't help at that time. And right now, Clover Bud is, help is kind of full. What you, yeah. well, you have a question? Yeah, I did, um, regarding the preschool. What type, did you say something about preschool? Yes, yes, so Melissa okay. goes into some preschools Melissa, and she, oh, she, goes into she goes into them. She doesn't have them come here. She goes into them and, and she teaches them. She's done two or three programs on seeds and then she did She's doing like the second or third program on birds, and I think her next one is going to be butterflies. You know, all the warm, fuzzy stuff. <laughs> Did you say her name's Melissa Smart? Young. Young. We could call her Smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if you're interested in that, just contact me. She, she, she's always okay with help. I think when she has one preschool that's really tight in the room and so there's only can be one other adult. Now the teachers are always in with all of them so that if there's any disruptions or if you need help or something, they're right there. And we just finished up a huge class down at a um, pri private slash charter school. I'm not quite sure which would it really qualifies that. And there were 53 kids in that class. There were three, three classes of it and we did birds, and we made uh, Cheerio bird seed feeders. It's a special kind of Cheerio you have to get. You can't get the sugar kind or the, the ones with dyes in them. And uh, they strung them on pipe cleaners, three pipe cleaners, and then a string that went around, and you just hang it in the tree. And that was, um, and we only, and we don't teach for like three hours or two hours. No. It's mostly 45 minutes to an hour. We were actually scheduled in that one for an hour and a half, but when we got there, they were like, yeah, you only have an hour. So it was like, what can we cut out? And she was gonna send a bunch of stuff home and the teachers were like, no, give them to us and we'll send them Monday so that they, be, they actually get home instead of them holding it and ending up in the trash. So that was, that was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. <laughs> And there was uh, two other master gardeners there and the teachers, plus me and Melissa. And so, and then after we got that done, she gathered them together and asked, the, asked them questions about birds. Like, what's the most common bird? What's the biggest bird? What's, what do you think is the smallest bird? Which one is the fastest bird? That sort of thing. Or which one has the longest wingspan and of course she had to, these were first graders and she had to explain what a wingspan was and her idea was at some time to, to measure them, measure their wingspan, but we didn't have time for that. And she also wanted to know who had the longest lifespan. Well, first graders did not know what that was. <laughs> so we had to explain to them that it was the longest living bird. 
And so that was a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, uh, give me a call, come talk to me. I'd be glad to help you get involved in that. team and I think we had some people in this from this class already come to one of our open meetings yeah so I just wanted to start out by s telling you what the reason why we exist the propagations team started and we have we have two goals we have one is education and one is to produce plants for the plant sale and we do the education part of it we, we educate both master gardeners through our open meetings and also the public uh, for example, we had a grafting workshop this February that was fantastic. It was our first one. Um, and then we also do some classes for Bull City Gardener Live. Um, and then we also collaborate with other Master Gardener committees. For example, uh, George Ann and Peter ran a, a booth, a propagation booth at the plant festival. So we're, and we, and we do some things through the Speakers Bureau. And um, then we do plants for the plant sale, and last year we weren't really representative, but we have had up to, I think the, the biggest one was like over a thousand plants that we had produced for the plant sale. And we're gearing up to do that again this year. So I'm gonna turn it over to my, my co-chair, and she's gonna talk to you a little bit about our open meetings. So the open meetings, we have about three a year, and we take a large amount of people, probably about 10 to 12. Uh, but you sign up on the internet, and the next class is going to be June 19th. There's another one August 21st. There's another one September 18th. You'll see it on the internet. You just simply sign up. I'll be checking those before class begins, and when I see your name, I'm going to send you a, a, a very busy email. It's going to have links in it, films to watch. And it's going. To, it's the best way to prepare for it. It'll give you an introduction of what of what it is that we do. It'll also instruct you about what to bring in. You're going to bring in mostly semi-hardware cuttings. I'll explain that in the, in the email. And you'll bring them in a, you'll try to get them that morning if you can. Because they're fresher that way, more, they're more turgid, more full of water. You bring them in a bucket. And then we'll give a mini lecture before we start, kind of explaining the how-tos and the why-tos of this, this process. And you'll be, you'll be put with a member of small groups make your cuttings. We provide, this comes from the plant sale money, we provide a system that you can you can use to grow your cuttings. So you'll have a tray with the, the right mixture in it. You'll have a dome, which is like a miniature greenhouse with a spray bottle. And that, that's provided for you. One time only now, <laughs> not every trip. <laughs> but uh, that'll allow you to take care of your cuttings at home. We'll tell you how to do it. Also, you'll receive a post-care email after you've attended the class, and we'll kind of go over, we'll go with, over with you too as a team member what to do, but it's kind of like a reinforcement about how you take care of your cuttings and how you check and see if they're rooted yet. And you might even want to choose to take some of your successes to the plate sale. I mean, you sort of keep what you want, but many times people have more than what they want, and they take care of those babies, and they, they donate to the plant sale, which is great. I guess things from seeds and things from cuttings are a little, considered a little bit better than things that are divided, although we still divide things because you, there's a thing about eating junk and worms that people have been concerned about. And it's not always easy to clean off all the eggs when you divide something if you have them. So that's why it's a little bit cleaner to do a cutting or a seed propagation. And, oh. Okay, uh, well, let me just, I, I know that here is, is to invite you guys to go into the t onto the teams, and our team is a little bit different. We're at capacity right now, so that's why we're offering these open classes, and that's what she was talking about, what goes on when we go to class. So you sort of go to the teams? Yes. That's the yes. class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've made a commitment that anybody
anybody who signs up for one of our open classes is going to get in. So uh, we have four seats available, but if you get there and, and it's full, just go on the wait list and we'll put you in. So that's, that's our availability. I was out in the hallway this morning and um, two people came up to me and said, oh, when I was in your class and I did this cutting and guess what, it's this fall now. <laughs> It's propagation team and it's on the third Monday and the dates that are coming up are where did I oh, June, 19th. June 19th August 21st and September 18th are the next three and we have some people like I said that came to our March class how are you guys doing <laughs> No, no, it's you can okay. sign up as many times as you want to to come to the classes. If you already have your tray, if you've been before and you're coming back, bring your tray. One of the things we do is everybody brings their branches of their plants and then we, we end up swapping. So you go home with plants that you didn't even bring, which is really fun. And let's see, I think that's it. Is there any other questions? You were there. <laughs> How's your cuttings doing? <laughs> Oh, cool. That's wonderful. It's, it really is exciting when that happens. It's almost like magic. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Okay, thank you.
So around early 22, we became a committee. And again, we've been working ever since. We've taken educational opportunities that Ashley's gonna talk about. And we decided as a group that we would really make a difference by providing educational opportunities mm -hmm. for the membership of the Master Gardeners as well as the committees. So all the people that you're hearing today from different committees can also spread that. So then the growth will be exponentially more. All staying positive and happy. Pitch is hard now, you are. <laughs> I'll be the main one frustrated, and I can't believe I said that. I know you all. Uh, no, we switch roles sometimes, but we keep moving. So I want to just say um, what we were going to say, and I, I really finished it now. But the last one, we really formed partnerships too. Took the workshop with Duke and. Uh, one thing I left that workshop with, I always have to say, if I spend this much time with something, I need to take one thing home to make an impact in my life. What's the idea when you form partnerships? We have to make sure that the partnerships are diverse. They actually even said the idea of black slash brown partnerships to be clear of some of the outreach that we should be providing. So again, we're doing Education opportunities, all volunteer, not required. This is you, this is what you would be interested in. And then opportunities for each committee to help in some way there. So we have one education opportunity that's coming up, Ashley. Yeah, so um, can I, I'm gonna do an aside, I'll keep it, I'll keep it short. Um, one of the things we're really fortunate for here in Durham is that we have the Durham Environmental Coalition, which is a group of environmentally focused nonprofits that are all working together talking, right? So this is going to be ECWA, this is going to be, you know, even some governmental organizations like us, uh, you can, all these different groups talking about how we can build these partnerships together. And through the Durham Environmental Coalition, there have been a number of really good workshops offered. So the leadership of this committee has actually taken a number of workshops even on how you do this. And it's one of those things that if you join the committee, there are extra educational opportunities. But one of the major things that we're offering for everyone um, are these groundwater trainings. And everyone is like, groundwater, I'm gonna learn about water. Mm -hmm. This is the Racial Equity Institute. They're based out of Greensboro and they do these amazing um, racial equity trainings. They call them groundwater trainings. They call it a groundwater approach because the idea is basically that if you show up to a lake and all of the fish are dying, you don't wonder, or all the fish are not doing well, you don't say it's a fish problem. You say it's a water problem, right? So what are the systemic forces that are causing these different things? And some of this way that this plays out in Durham even, and this plays out nationally as well, is like if you look at our tree cover here in Durham, our big, beautiful, wonderful street mm -hmm. trees, mm -hmm. and if you look at historic redlining maps, which are the maps that were drawn up in the 30s basically to show what were the good neighborhoods and what were the bad neighborhoods. Street tree cover and redlining maps are direct overlay, okay? That's nationally true and it's true here in Durham. And so we have all of these things going on with our environment that we think are just tree things, but they're social things, yeah. right? And we have to look at kind of all of that together. So one of the trainings we have coming up is this groundwater training. It is on May 13th from 1 to 4 p.m. Some of you guys might have been through this before. It's a three-hour training. This is our third session of it that we're offering. This is typically a $50 training, but we have 15 slots set aside for free. If more people than that sign up, we will figure out how to pay for you, right? We just want people to, to do this if they want to do it. If you want to offset the cost of your seat, you can do that, but you certainly don't have to. We want to provide this for you so that folks have it. Um, our advisory committee generously set aside that funding. After the training, we will also have a follow-up where we come back together and we talk about how do we apply this to our program, right? So many times you go through trainings and you're like, that's great, and then you never think about it again, but we try to keep kind of coming back to these things to make sure we're, we're getting the most we can out of them. So that's our major one coming up um, Saturday, May 13th, 1 to 4 p.m. Sign up if you're interested. It's gonna be great, and huge thanks to Oh, I'm Karen. Huge thanks to me and Joey for uh, coordinating this. So, um, is this in Greensboro? It is a Zoom. It's, 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 it's a, a Zoom. Zoom class. We all took yeah, it. Yeah. Well, and the, yeah, so, and the reason I mentioned the Greensboro thing is this is cool, 
because it's like a national level training, uh -huh. but it's based out of right near here. And so it does have a little bit of a, like, it, it feels like it's got some local flavor, which is nice. Yeah. Well, I have a question about diversity. Excuse my ignorance. Um, when, you, when you're referring to diversity, because that's such a huge term, yes. are you mostly talking about people of color and different culture backgrounds or also people on the autism spectrum? And, I mean, it just, you know, it goes on and on and on. So I just want to be clear. Okay. And, and, and I, I apologize. I had just made a note to myself and I got the pen. That was what I was going to explain. Oh, really? So hopefully I can answer your question Thanks. on that. When we looked at, what we actually looked at was the diversity of the Durham area. And then we looked, what, uh, based on the data, what, 41% would be non-Hispanic white, 34% black, 15% Hispanic, 5% Asian, and then we have the Native Americans and mixed. But what we were hoping, and what we have out as a goal, that we were gonna strive to represent those demographics in the community in our broad, of our broader community. And that diversity can also include race, ethnicity, gender, culture, sexual orientation, and identity. What about that? <laughs> We want you to yeah. add them. <laughs>
So it's figuring that out. Ooh, it's pretty good. But, um, Some errands, what's your question? Lotter box. Lotter box. Okay. Yeah. You can pronounce it right. All right. Thank, well, thank you, Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got the better version of me today. Yeah. So. celebration. Um, have they heard about this already? Okay. Anyway, it's on May 25th. You will soon get an invitation, but you don't even have to wait for the invitation because Wanda has put a sign up on the intranet. Um, so first of all, this first page here is just to show that, that we do have a page. You can read about what we do. Um, this happens to be a picture of one of the get-togethers we had in December several years ago. Um, we did not have it last year because of pandemic or the year before, so hopefully we'll get back to something like that. Um, so, let's see, could you please just go to the um, calendar, the internet calendar, and go to the um, sign up? Um, Anyway, some of the other kinds of um, social things that we um, just try to facilitate is we have had some gatherings at a bar, at a restaurant, and these are purely voluntary social events just to get to know one another because many of us work on this committee or that committee and we never talk, we never see the rest of, the, of our membership. Um, Okay, so Mary, many people are familiar with your committee because of the week of National March. <laughs> so Margaret is a member of of the social committee, which provide which is which brings food to certain events such as this one, and she's also a member of the committee which has set up all these classes. So she's a so like many. Double threat. Good work. <laughs> so, like like many, like most of our members, we 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 serve on multiple committees. Um, let's see. So that's that's really what we do. But I just want to say that please go ahead and sign up. Um, you can sign up for savory, or you can sign up. <laughs> Okay, so this, yeah, this is listed here. So um, you don't have to sign under this one if you're not bringing a guest. Because if you sign up here, we know you're coming. Um, so anyway, you know, just sign up to either bring a savory or to bring a sweet. Um, and in addition, if you're going to bring a guest, sign up here. In addition, if you want to bring a bottle of wine, to share, that will be very welcome. Um, we, we, we set them up at a bar. We have a bartender, um, thankfully, who is a... Uh, we didn't put wine in the sign-up because uh, last year we didn't want to sign up for wine. <laughs> We 
want the food to be finger food. So please just be creative about how you put it in portions so people can easily pick up a portion. And is that no castle in the garden of the tower kind of thing? Or is that what you're um, All of our events are very casual. <laughs>
you had an opportunity to see the demo garden flourish. Please tell me you started watching it back early and you could see it. Uh, people were coming by and they were saying, ooh, that's the garden you talk about all the time? <laughs> Give it some time. This is, <laughs> this is going through winter, January. Around February, did you all start seeing the demarcation? Our demonstration garden, we started in about uh, 2018. Everything is surrounding you, Ashley. When you were coming in from the idea, well, she had the idea of a dream garden, and the idea of a demonstration garden was part of the extension uh, program. But when we look at it, um, we really had a demonstration garden, and Wanda was on that group back in 2000. So, but what we decided to do was remove all of the Move all of the plants. Matter of fact, at one time we took up a hundred or so plants and donated to the plant sale committee wow. because the only thing that we kept was our wonderful 60 year old oak tree we love dearly. When you walk up those steps for our recognition sidewalk, you should think about and we have pictures. Thank you, Ashley, <laughs> of the painstaking efforts they went through to preserve the roots of that tree. So, and then we have the crab apple tree, and then we have on the side Sarasbury tree, and we kept one uh, azalea. Everything else was all new, and we started all over again for our demonstration garden. And initially, for the first year, 2019, 2020, uh, actually we did about seven field trips. We went to all the demonstration gardens in the, in the area from Alamance County, Chatham County, all, all throughout. I was already prettier than theirs. <laughs> because we didn't have anything when we went in business, so we really had an opportunity to take advantage of what we were, what we were looking at. So we really took off in 20, 2019, 2020, because here we started seeing pictures of our committee at that time. We had a redesign committee. Uh, and this was, I know that, I actually know the date of this, I said, Enough, it was about January the 5th, 20, uh, when we were doing uh, 2020. It was cold. <laughs> Ashley has on a mask, you can see, because we were all into the pandemic, but we never, we slowed down some, but we didn't stop. So we kept on going, and from that part, we developed, when you go out of the door, please look, you see what, on each side, that we call them center beds. They are the framework of entering the extension building. And we worked with that and we worked and we developed that. Matter of fact, this year was the second year of our perennial plants coming back. They look pretty good for the yeah. second year, don't they? Yeah. And, uh, and, and we just fill in a little bit. And the issue is, I want to make sure that I never, and I said that at number one, too. We have an outstanding group of volunteers that's doing that. I'm just talking for them. Mm -hmm. We have a group, matter of fact, <laughs> Meredith just finished. I call her the area over in the shady bed. Have you watched the one where we have a sport field mm -hmm. where you can see the uh, shady beds of plants that could take heavy shade, partial shade, right? Partial sun to full sun. So we have different groups, and I call that I call that Mary's Corner. It's supposed to be a hidden garden after a while where the bench is with evergreen uh, borders going around. Should I say evergreen native yeah. <laughs> plants going around? Mary get me for leaving out native. <laughs> so, and then we have another group that's responsible for the center bed. Another group that just finished. Stand up, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> they just were motivated and what was about two months ago. How many of you seriously noticed when we when we planted the sunny bed? Okay. Please tell me. <laughs> because we were, that area had been people asking, when are you gonna get to it? We've been trying to get to it for three years, so <laughs> that was a lot. And we're gonna be we have a work day tomorrow. <laughs> Matter of fact, when your classes are over. You could remember our work days. Our work days are once a month on the third Thursday, which is a day like today. 
So when you are over, now we'll go back. We've been having on Friday, so we have a work day tomorrow. And uh, if you have the time between 9 to 11, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> Let me tell you, all you have to do to become a member of, and I have about, my distribution list is about 25 people. So I, 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 I stand and I worry, and we probably get about 15 each time for our work days. So put you on the distribution list and you'll become a member of the demonstration garden. Now the only thing that we have left, so you all won't think that we are finished with everything, and we have that stay with our gaiters, that's what I was gonna mention, these are some of our, we'll go through that. But if you're out facing the extension building, starting in August, September, we'll be having a vertical bed with trellises put up. That'll be our farm bed. So all of that will come up, and this will be we'll have a right and left side for our trellises and our. And now I do the things that I said. I'm gonna go through these fast because in our vision we talk about being a unique garden as an educational model that we're gonna use for people throughout the country. So we start out with things like our. What's the name of those two at the top? They are planters. But what's the name? You all are not supposed to be home. Gavian. So how many people have noticed those? Mm -hmm. Those were some of the first things that, that we did. I'm going to run through them because I, I, if I don't say about how many people are Flora. Flora came in yesterday. How many people have noticed her moss garden?
to, and I always think about this, to a, and this is important to me, an emerging botanist. And are, maybe like me, a fun, lifelong gardening enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> that it'll be something for everyone in the general garden. It's an urban garden, and that's part of our vision. We had produced teaching and design that would provide people options in an urban environment, and that's what we work to do. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs>